Feldman, and I'm in San Francisco, California. Mary, um, can you sort of cast your whole mentoring experience um, as, as a story? Can you tell me uh, um, who it was you mentored and what their goals were and how they became involved in the program? Certainly. I was a mentor through the Academy of Dermatology for the minority student, minority medical student program. And the goals of the program were to give minority students uh, sort of a, a leg up and a long-term view into dermatology and the possibilities. Um, they were matched with various interests they had from academic dermatology to practitioners uh, you know, from all walks of life. Uh, in my case, a medical student came to me and we worked in our clinical research unit and exposed him to clinical research, uh, but he really mentored and, and um, uh, worked with me through all the phases of my academic career and went to uh, the, the clinical rounds, uh, clinical practice unit, assisted with some surgeries and really got pretty broad exposure overall. Um, what were his, his short-term goals? I think he was most interested in really being exposed to dermatology in a somewhat deeper way than he could through a traditional rotation in dermatology at the university. He knew he was interested in dermatology as a potential career but wanted to confirm that and wanted to see sort of the broader aspects of what it meant to be a dermatologist not only in clinical practice but what else you could do in terms of clinical research and epidemiology and how you applied all of that into the practice. Um, what, were the, uh, what were the results for your, for your mentee? Well, we had a nice uh, publication and he actually won a medical student award for his presentation. Uh, and, and worked and efforts during that month. And ultimately, he joined a, a dermatology residency and is now successfully in practice. Um, what do you think um, the legacy of, of um, the program is for, um, we know what the legacy is, we'll, we'll find out what the legacy is for, for the doctor, but the legacy is What's the program doing for patients? What is, what is, what is it really, is there any direct impact on the you know, patient base in this program, aside from the people? Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I think that it, that's a, probably one of the more difficult things to measure directly. But certainly, I would hope that through mentorships and, and being a mentee, we expand our horizons and our openness and our our willingness to, to look at things through different viewpoints. And I think that there's a, a mutual learning and satisfaction that comes with looking at things through other eyes and being, being uh, provoked to think things differently. And the sharing of ideas, um, you know, up and down sort of the, the ranks and facilitating broader discussions than we might have when we're not participating in that sort of uh, daily interaction um, ultimately generates new ideas that certainly, I think, have a positive impact on patient practice. For yourself, how, how did it feel when you were, when you were, can you sort of go back to that time, when you, your very first mentorship, how did it feel? Was it, was it exciting? Was it task oriented? Was it like, were you breaking new ground? Were you doing this on your own? Or was there a program that, uh, well, within our university, this he was the first. It was the first year of this particular mentorship program, and he was the first one through. I don't think that either of us approached it with trepidation, but certainly, um, certainly a question as to how we would take this, what direction, um, how rigid we would make it versus flexible, and sort of. Um, uh, meeting the needs on a day-to-day -day basis versus building a, a rigid program. Um, and we discussed it a little and left it relatively loose and were able to be very flexible, um, you know, on a regular basis over the ensuing several months that we worked together as to sort of emphasis uh, of the program and what the ultimate goal would be, which turned out to be a little bit more uh, research-oriented and what his final product was. Um, Certainly, it's really reinvigorating. You're, you're thinking things through differently. You're asked questions that you're not asked on a regular basis by others who are more sort of your colleague level at the time. And there's a, there's a freshness in that interaction. And 
um, it makes you more enthusiastic to come into work and think things through differently. Um, I think you answered the last of my, my question with you say what if you could say one what's the one thing that's the most important about the mentoring program? Oh, I think there's a mutual dynamic that's really satisfying in terms of invigorating your own thought processes and your your openness to look at things differently um, and to share overall positive experiences and and commitments to sort of our field in medicine and and how we approach the you know the learning um, bilaterally um, I think that's the best thing we've done through various mentorship programs and in each and every case no matter what the real focus of the mentorship there's something to be gained by sort of all participants sort of both sides Thank you. Um, so, first of all, I'll ask you to introduce yourself and tell us what your practice is, and uh, just in case we hear you talking before we actually see you. Okay. And then I'm going to ask you a few questions that Karen is taking. Fine. We're welcome. I'm Dr. Wilma Bergfeld from the Cleveland Clinic. I practice dermatology and dermatopathology. I've been a dermatologist now for 43 years, and I'm the founder and the first chairman, or actually president, of the Women's Dermatological Society. This video will be about mentoring, and um, I've asked, I'm asking everyone to sort of give, give me a story, what some of us, you know, their experience from, what, rather than how many people you've mentored, just one person that sticks in your mind. And if you could um, sort of say, tell me a little bit about that person. Not the name's not important, but just the circumstances that uh, how they became involved, what the WDS role was in that uh, in that mentoring, what the person's goals were, and what the results were. Can you sort of mm -hmm. do a little mentoring story for me? Yes, I can. Okay. I'm a hair expert, and there are very few of us out there in dermatology that actually like hair disorders and take care of a large group of patients. And I've had the opportunity to mentor dermatologists who are interested in hair disorders over the years. And one very special person I can remember very well, who was Canadian, who came to me and said, I want to spend some time with you and learn what you do. Can I, can I I'm not going to thank if that fly was in my shot. Did you see him? Um, I actually didn't see him. I did. But uh, if you did, I'm going to have to go to there. I did. Okay. That's all I could get okay. my eyes on. Yeah, I'm really sorry to interrupt you. That's all right. Okay, we'll do that again from the top. Okay. From the top, yeah, where I'm, who I am? No, no, not who you are. I mean, not the, the hair you part. The, the hair yeah. part? Yeah, the hair part, exactly. Okay. Well, I'm a dermatologist who practices at the Cleveland Clinic, and my specialty is hair disorders. And it's a very unusual subspecialty of dermatology, even though we see a lot of hair disorders in all of our practices. So there are a few of us that are experts across the country. And I had the opportunity of mentoring a Canadian dermatologist who wanted to learn more about hair disorders. And the wonderful thing about this young person when he came to me was that, one, he was open to seeing these patients, and they're an unusual group of patients. A lot of complaints. Many times have been to many dermatologists. Many times they've been told they can't be helped, which they can always be helped in some manner. So this young man came in, and he learned from me, and then he since went off to Vera Price, who is another hair expert in the San Francisco area and also a member of the Women's Derm Society. And since then, his exposure, his learning, he has been a marvelous addition to the international community of dermatologists who, who actually treat hair disorders. And in fact, he just ran the national an international congress that was held up in Vancouver on hair disorders and did this magnificent job. But not only that, he's written books, he's presented across the world, he has been a marvelous representative. He's been a marvelous person to represent the specialty. And he is also a member of the American Academy of Dermatology. So this man has been a wonderful dermatologist. And a Canadian to boot. And a Canadian to boot. <laughs> what I think you covered the legacy for the individual. Let's um, let's uh, what is 
um, what's the real value of the program in general, in broad scope? Well, the real value of the Women's Dermatological Society are several. Actually, they should be called values, because what we've been able to do is take an organization that was first founded to develop collaborating, excuse me, that was, what we've been able to do is to develop, no, excuse me, what we've been able to do is to bring women together for friendship, collegiality, and then after that happened, it was the group's decision that they needed to do something for their younger colleagues. And so the mentorship program was developed under Frances Storrs, who has been a very active member of the Women's Dermatological Society. And what we have done over time is expanded from just doing mentorship of residents to doing mentorship of young students, high school students, college students, individuals who have been in Durham residencies, and we've done now career development mentorships, meaning after you've finished your dermatological residency and have been in practice, that you can come back and retrain. The unique part about it, this mentorship, is that we pair a member, woman, member, with the mentor. And in this twosome, one person has to be a woman and one person can be a woman or a man, but it is the combination of women mentoring or women learning. And so it's been marvelous. And we have now served as an example for most dermatological societies that exist in the United States as to be having this most wonderful mentorship program that is being a model for all of the rest. What, um, going forward, what do you see? Okay. What is the future of the women's dermatological mentoring? It's going to go on. We are now planning how we can make it durable and it will have it continue and have monies in reserve for this program or these programs. So it is our intention that this will go on for many, many years. You covered all the questions. Carrie asked Thank you. Perfect. Roger, I appreciate it. Who you are and where you're from. Lenore Kakita from Pasadena, California. Um, could you say, I'm Lenore. Oh, I am Lenore Kakita from Pasadena, California. I'm the past president, uh, 2002, of the Women's Dermatological Society. <laughs> um, a mentoring story, just to get us going here. Someone who stands out in your mind, a mentee that stands out in your mind, uh, maybe your introduction to the program. One of the most exciting ones that I heard of was a young lady who came up to me at one of the networking receptions who was from Pakistan, and she had a mentorship uh, grant and went to Amy Peller's uh, uh, office and learned about pediatric dermatology. She went back to Pakistan and created three pediatric clinics, dermatological clinics in her country. And she was just so excited to tell me about that uh, and how wonderful the mentorship program was to her. Can you reintroduce that story um, by, by saying, I met a young woman? You know, just, just, just. I met a young woman at one of the networking receptions the year I was president. And she happened to be from Pakistan. And I was just so elated when she told me about her mentorship with Amy Peller in pediatric dermatology, and then going back to her country and developing three pediatric clinics in her country. What, um, yourself as, as a mentor, I've been a mentor, and actually, uh, one young lady, Judy Ng, had uh, been in training in Chicago and did not have exposure to Asian patients. And so she requested to be a mentee in my office, and so we had a wonderful time. We have become best of friends. And